Are you going to try to tear it loose or do you try to work from the outside in? Or? I'm going to blast the living daylights out of it. Hello again, this is Dr. James Johnson, also known as the Floater Doctor. This is a common situation, but rarely treated. Well, first of all, floaters are rarely treated, but um, this condition is probably not considered to be a floater. What we're looking at here is a dilated pupil and lots of reflections, I apologize for that, but if you can, can ignore that, uh, this white creamy material that is uh, superimposed in front of a kind of a blurry orange background, these are vitreous densities. And this material here we're looking at is um, a uh, thin two-dimensional sheet which is the vitreous cortex. It's the outer plasticky sheet or membrane that uh, surrounds the vitreous, normally up against the retina. So in a posterior vitreous detachment, this entire membrane will peel away. It will be loosely adherent. It'll be kind of folded over on itself. And as I'm hitting it here with the laser, you can see it move around and kind of open up and fold over. And it's a very dynamic uh, material. Usually this membrane is, is um, less opaque or, or less hazy or less like wax paper and more like clear clear transparent plastic. Uh, this gentleman here is particularly bothered by just this diffuse cl hazy cl moving dynamically moving uh, cloudy haze across his vision and truth be told is with normal eye examining ophthalmoscopes you can look right through this and just say retina looks pretty good nothing really going on here you have to really have the lighting just right. In this case, you know, specialty contact lenses and the lighting coming in from a oblique, oblique angle. And then once you see it, you can't unsee it. I mean, like, look at that. Trying to look through that all day, all night, and being told by your doctor, everything's fine, uh, PVD, just learn to live with it. Really? You just have to learn to live with that? It's so... <laughs> it's disturbing. Uh, if he had this amount of cloudiness in his lens, they'd be scheduling him for cataract surgery tomorrow but uh, but no so um, the laser the, the green laser beam uh, focusing beams uh, tell me where I'm focused and the energy itself is focused down to about eight or nine microns eight or nine thousandths of a millimeter very very small amount of energy so I'm just barely chipping away at this thing chip 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 you know uh, a thousand shots 800 shots a thousand shots 1100 shots would be a typical treatment like this and then the patient will come back the next day for more of the same and maybe a third day in a row more of the same and the goal is to break up this membrane uh, so that what I'm not what I'm not able to treat will just kind of retract and fall out into the periphery so that the central vision will be cleaner and clearer um, and yeah so so this material it's not really considered to be a floater uh, is definitely a floater as bad as any other floaters and uh, I showing a little bit of this on day number one and uh, and maybe in the next scene I'll show how this looks uh, after a couple treatments yeah it does look a lot better wow because I have because I've, I've watched your video a number of times you know I'm trying to learn this video editing program and so it just like playing it over and over and over again um, and that membrane that was just so obvious is mostly gone out of that central pathway there. I'm pretty happy with that. All right, I'm back for a little post-treatment commentary. I don't know if you stuck around this long in the video, but um, as I was just saying from my um, comments while treating, this area looks a lot better. Now I'm picking at some particular densities it's hard to tell with all the reflections and all the lights that are going on here, but I'm just kind of picking up some small bits and pieces. Um, but overall, really, really pleased with, with the treatment of these membranes, which are not usually treatable and not really even considered floaters. And for a procedure that is just generally inefficient, um, and for the type of floaters that are not even considered treatable, uh, I'm overall pretty pretty pleased with this. Now I think we'll, we'll move things around a little bit, and you will see some um, some material moving around and again the lighting is a little dim it's hard to tell my view while I'm treating is always always much better but yeah here's here's some of this material there so there's a little bit of cloudy material there 
uh, that that stringy strand there looks a little bit reformed mm. but uh, and this is why it takes more than one treatment and uh, so for people that are especially that are coming from out of town uh, they'll often ask uh, uh, you know how to how to schedule and I usually say you know schedule at least two or three treatments um, because we never know I never know what's going to walk through the door never know it's going to walk through the door and um, these uh, just take a little bit more time so this is either the end of the third maybe even a fourth treatment and I think this is the end of the third treatment um, where it looks like this so overall patient is pleased uh, and you know like Pareto's law Pareto's principle the 80 20 rule um, it you can get to 80 percent improve pretty quickly but getting that last 20 percent is always a bit of a challenge so I'm always managing and remanaging people's expectations uh, in that we can't get 100 percent but if we can get it a lot, lot better, if we can get it to the point where some of this leftover material is just relegated to background noise uh, and the patient is overall happy, then uh, then we've succeeded. And also, um, if we have avoided a vitrectomy, then maybe doubly, triply successful because uh, there's that. So anyways, um, I thought uh, some of you might find uh, uh, this interesting uh, as well as, <laughs> especially, as I think I mentioned earlier, these floaters are really hard to find on examination. So if you're really disturbed by a lot of shifting movement and the doctor's kind of shrugging their shoulders saying, uh, everything looks good, I don't really see it that much, uh, this could be this could be part of, of what's going on. And this is not unusual at all. I just had a patient uh, this morning, uh, a radiologist all the way from New Zealand, and he had just that, mostly the membrane stuff. So he'll come back tomorrow and We'll get a uh, follow-up on that and probably do some more treatment and, and try to make uh, his quality of life a bit better as well as uh, comfort while working. So anyways, I'll wind it up here. Uh, this is just a little bit more of the same. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, any questions or, or comments, you can put that down in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Take care. Have a great day.